from Kelloland Media Group. Kelloland News, first at four. Coming up, the race to save campers at Houston Speedway from quickly rising water. Details coming up. Plus, drivers are making a lot of unexpected detours. We'll show you the roads shut down by rising water in Lincoln County. And we take you to rural Minnesota where some fields are also underwater. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First and Four. I'm Tom Hansen. And I'm Kelly Volk. The flooding across eastern Kelloland is our top story this afternoon. Yeah, here's a live look at Falls Park where the swollen river is overflowing onto the nearby rocks, even into the grass. And there's more rain on the way, creating a dangerous situation. And speaking of danger, there's also a tornado warning. Here's meteorologist Scott Munt with the latest on that. Scott. All right, good afternoon, Tom. Good afternoon. Kelloland tornado warning came out about 5, 10 minutes ago in northwestern Iowa. It is a radar indicated tornado developing or possibly developing there near the Sheldon area. This is moving east northeast at about 20 miles per hour. We'll continue the watch for the storm developments in northwestern Iowa and southeastern South Dakota. I mentioned right before we came on with the newscast that we've been able to see sunshine into this area. That more or less just adds more instability to the atmosphere and that's what we have going on at the moment. You can see how these thunderstorms have blossomed here over the past 30 to maybe 60 minutes. In fact, I will put an hour loop on this as you see things continuing to come in from the southwest. That's where we do have our warm front trying to come in from is the southwest and that's a good focal point for these thunderstorms. We continue with the flood warnings from all the rain we've had over the past 24 to 36 hours. These flood warnings extend from near Chamberlain to the east. We've had rainfall amounts here in excess of six inches approaching a foot for some. In fact, I do want to quickly go through some of those numbers for you, too. Between Worthing and Canton, getting close to a foot, about 9 inches Davis. And anywhere you see here in purple, that's where we do have some of the rainfall estimates coming in at over 6 inches. It also does extend into southwestern Minnesota, that area there from Mount Vernon over toward Mitchell, also underneath the gun there with the uh, flood warnings that we do have. Otherwise, we'll continue to follow the showers, thunderstorms that will develop in not only southeastern South Dakota. Would not be surprised to see these develop as well into south central South Dakota. We do have a severe thunder, excuse me, a, a severe thunderstorm watch in southeastern Kelloland. That's out until 11 o'clock this evening. And we also have a watch across the border into Wyoming. That's out until I believe it's 9 o'clock. And you can see how we've had some breaks in those clouds in southeastern South Dakota, again, just to aid in the instability in the atmosphere. So our forecast for tonight, things will become a little more widespread as we do go through the overnight hours in eastern and southeastern Kelloland. I think the possibilities there for the severe weather will eventually go away, then becomes more of a heavy rain threat in the east and southeast as numbers fall to the 50s and 60s. And then for tomorrow, we can start with rain and then we'll see a decrease in cloud cover temperatures in the 70s and low 80s. Again, that tornado warning is in O'Brien County until 415. It is radar indicated and we'll continue to monitor it here in the storm center. Thank you, Scott. Several roads are closed and barriers are up in many counties. Minnehaha County Emergency Manager Jason Gearman has an urgent message he wants to get out to drivers. You never know what, what's washed out under that under the water that is going over the road. And what happens a lot of time, it'll, uh, it, the car can stall out and then the water keeps rising and it can push the car in the ditch or into some debris. And that's where it becomes treacherous because you know the, water, the car could be totally underwater. Now roads aren't the only thing underwater. Our Kelland News crew was able to capture this video at Houston Speedway on the edge of Brandon. With all of the rain, the water is rising in the Houston's campground, and rescue crews were called in to help bring people to higher ground. Split Rock Creek runs right through that campground. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of RVs may be lost to this flooding. We'll take a closer look at the rush to get people to safety tonight at 6. And all of the water is also flooding roads in Lincoln County, including a highway west of Harrisburg, where some drivers found themselves stranded. You'll also find people hard at work trying to protect their homes in Canton. Sandbagging has been underway since last night. Many streets in town look like rivers and more rain is in the forecast. Roads near Elvert, Iowa are closed following a train derailment in a flooded area. The Lyon County Sheriff's Office tells Kelloland News that no one was hurt in the derailment. 
Only grain cars were involved, so there's no hazardous materials. Burlington Northern Santa Fe is handling the derailment and will reopen the roads when that work is done. Well, parts of rural Minnesota have a half foot more rain than they did at this point last year. It's causing a different kind of headache for farmers. John Lordson takes us to Sibley County, where many farmers are pivoting from drought to flooded fields. Way too much of a good thing is just that, too much of a good thing, you know. Three years of drought and dry conditions had Owen Golke praying for timely rains. It's now safe to say he got more than he bargained for. We're struggling, obviously. Uh, we struggled to get planted. We've now struggled to keep the crop alive. That's because many of his fields in Sibley County have turned into lakes. Of the 65 acres you see behind me, 30 are already lost. That's a high number, especially with more rain on the way. Will these crops survive? No. No, any that stuff that's yellow, I mean, anything that's underwater that you don't see, that's dead. So instead of 10,000 lakes, Minnesota is, I don't know, 150,000 lakes probably at this point, right? If things eventually do dry out, Golke is worried about weeds. As soon as he planted this field, it rained and prevented him from putting down a herbicide. It's just been really stressful to watch him be so stressed about the responsibility of putting the 119th crop in this field. Tracy Golkey runs Golkey Farms with her husband. She knows there's plenty of time to recover. And while they can't control Mother Nature, they're now praying for a summer of average weather, not extremes. That is my hope, is that we get a crop out of this that surprises us in a positive way. One of my fields for um, the 10 year average is 14 inches. And this season total at this point is 23 inches. It's way too much, you know, more than the soils can handle. In Sibley County, John Lordson, WCCO News. Golke says nitrogen helps crops with photosynthesis, but the rain has washed much of that nitrogen away. That's why many corn stalks have a light green color instead of dark green. We will continue our local flood coverage coming up.